Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. I wouldn't be a finance YouTuber if I didn't at least discuss and explain, maybe break down my opinion on what's been happening. Forgive the title of this video, but there's never been more evident or more blatant market manipulation. And then after I talk about that, I'm gonna give you a reason why the poor must stay poor. I, I hate saying that, but it's never been more evident and more clear based on what's been happening right now. I'm not, this is a rant. I don't really have much planned. I'm not good at these stream of consciousness, just rants. So I wrote down a little bit of notes and I have some snippets and some screenshots that hopefully will help me. I'm going to do a quick recap of what's recently happened. I'll explain what a short squeeze is. You know, I, I've even seen finance YouTubers, I mean, fitness YouTubers, Google what a short squeeze is and try to explain it. So whatever. And then I'll give my opinion on what's happening and what I'm doing. A short squeeze is when you sell shares you do not own and you pay for them later. Why would I buy something at a later date? It's only if I think it'll go down. Imagine me selling something I don't own. I'll sell it for a hundred thousand. I know it's going to go down to 30,000 next week. I'll sell it now, pay for it later. What does this mean? If you don't, if you've never been in stocks, if this doesn't make sense, let me give you, let's say this is the easiest example I could think of. Jane has a car worth hundred thousand dollars. John wants a car. I go up to John and I say, I will sell you a car for hundred thousand dollars, but I'll give it to you in two weeks. I do this knowing that there's a shipment of 700,000 cars coming and Jane's car will be worth $30,000. There's an oversupply, not as much demand. So I sell John a car for 100,000 now, and in two weeks, I'll pay Jane $30,000 for it. I pocketed $70,000. Nothing wrong with that, right? But here's where it gets a little complicated. Here's where the squeeze comes in. I sell John a car for $100,000. That shipment of cars that's coming, 700,000, the ship sinks, all the cars are gone, no more supply. Jane will only sell her car now for 500,000, 600,000, a million dollars. I sold a car for $100,000 and in two weeks I have to pay a million dollars for it. That is the squeeze, I just lost $900,000. That is indirectly what's happening in a nutshell to these hedge funds and why now they're crying. Pretty much there was one 150 year old guy crying saying this is an attack on the wealthy. Let me give you a different example. Let me just make it a little more complicated. Those shipment of cars didn't crash. Let's say I sell John a car, 100,000, 700,000 cars coming, but 800,000 people want to buy. So the demand is increased, supply isn't there. So Jane knows this. So she ends up jacking up her price, 150,000, 160, 200,000. That is another example of the squeeze. So the, the shares aren't there for these hedge funds to purchase. So here's, here's the weird thing. Everyone's saying this is illegal. The people on Wall Street Bets, which coincidentally went from like 2 million users to over 6 million as a at the time of making this video. There was nothing illegal happening. There is no market manipulation. Everything was, illegal. Everything was legal. Here's the weird thing. These hedge funds, what are their names? Melvin Capital, Citadel, Citroen. They sold over 100% of the shares that were available. Imagine me selling two cars to John when Jane only has one. That's a little bit illegal, isn't it? How are they allowed to do this? I don't really understand. I don't get it. So here's what happened. On GameStop, Citroen, Melvin Capital, Citadel, they ended up shorting, selling shares they don't own. They sold more than 100% of the shares that were available. Where's the proof of that? The proof is right here. This is available to the public. SI percentage of float, short interest percentage of float. Float, how many shares are available? 100%? Look at this, 139%. It's been increasing since December. Last July, I believe people noticed, people saw that, that GameStop was 112% shorted. So they tried to do the squeeze. What did they do? They started buying shares, not selling them. Supply isn't there. Demand is up. Price increases. Everyone kind of makes money. 
they tried to do it, it ended up working. Now here's, here's where it got a little weird. When you, have to, when you have to cover your shares, you have to pay for it. And they're paying more than what they think it's worth. Everyone is saying GameStop is not worth this much. It doesn't matter what it's worth anymore. Look at what some of these traders did. No, the brokerage firms did. They ended up halting and banning some people from trading. This is the weirdest thing. They didn't let, I think it was January 28th, this was yesterday, they didn't let anyone buy shares. They're not letting the price to increase. They're only letting people sell shares. What happens when you only let someone sell? The price goes down. Here is a snippet of some messages that people are getting. Error, this order will exceed the maximum allowed AMC shares you can hold at this time. You currently have two shares purchased or pending, included this order, which exceeds the limit of one share. So you're letting me sell, you're not letting me buy. Who does this help? The price going down? Who does this help? The hedge funds. Retail investors, retail like myself, I own shares. We weren't allowed to buy more. Buying more kind of increases the squeeze. It increases the price of the shares, causing these hedge funds to lose billions. I'm okay with that. They start crying. They ended up calling all their friends in Robinhood and all the other brokerages. They're banning people from buying shares, which is absolutely insane. I've never, it's, it's clear it's not a free market. I've never seen more clear, evident, blatant market manipulation than this. Let me show you what happened. Take a look at this chart. Let me zoom in a little. This is the three minute candle of GameStop. It was at 471 at 10 a.m. People realized they weren't able to buy. You're only able to sell. Look what happened. It ended up going down within an hour, hour and a half. This is 90 minutes to 114, 113. It tanked 75% within an hour and a half. If this isn't market manipulation, I don't know what is. Everyone is saying, oh, the Redditors are pushing up the price. It's not our fault. Citroen, all these hedge fund managers, they had their hand in the cookie jar. They had two hands in the cookie jar and they got caught. All they had to do was not short over 100% of GameStop. This wouldn't have happened. The media, don't let anyone trick you into thinking it's these bunch of very offensive and alt-right people on Reddit manipulating. It's not. They're, how, how come these hedge fund managers are able to sell more than 100% of the float? It doesn't, the shares don't exist. I don't know how that's legal, but somehow the traders get halted. And it's so weird. Everyone is saying, I think the CEO of Robinhood, the co-founder of Robinhood came out and said, it's to protect the traders. Where, where was this protection when the 2008 financial crisis happened? Everyone lost their money, pensions. Where was this just Nine months ago, March 2020, when the market tanked, people lost 50, 60%. And the hedge fund managers, the billionaires, made billions off of this. Check it out, Bill Ackman. He went on the news, he, he shorted the market. He went on the news saying, hell is coming. He put fear in the market. People watch this news, news release. I don't watch the news. And then he ended up turning 27 million to 2.6 billion. And now he's trying... He's trying at it again. How come they're allowed to do this? And the retail traders, the normal folk, you and I can't do it. It's absolutely insane. What's even worse, the CEO of NASDAQ, she was saying she needs to call on more regulation in order to stop this from happening. Why? Nothing illegal happened. Where was the call for regulation when the bankers caused the 2008 financial crisis? None of whom went to jail. Did I use whom right? None of who went to jail. English is hard. Where was this in just 10 months ago when the market tanked? Bill Ackman was able to make 2.6 billion. They want more regulation. Where was this call for regulation then? To make matters even worse, all the companies, all the large companies are trying to hold us down after Robinhood basically didn't allow its users to make any money. Everyone had values, look guys, at this point, 470, some people, let's say they 10X their money. Take a look at the chart. Look at where it was. It was 40 just a few weeks, just a week ago, and then it went to 400. 
It's causing people to lose money. Everyone knows if you invest in the stock market, you can lose your money. Fine. Things go wrong, but you're not allowed to trade it. Your broker doesn't allow you to buy it. Like, let me lose money if I want to. It's absolutely insane. I, I, I just don't get it. So after Robinhood banned everyone from buying shares, tanking the price 75% in one day just to help their hedge fund billionaire friends, because, you know, everyone knows the billionaires can't turn to millionaires. It must be hard only owning one boat sitting around your Gucci loafers. So there were around 100,000 one-star reviews of Robinhood just because of the bad service. And then Google salvaged Robinhood's one-star rating by deleting near, nearly 100,000 negative reviews. If this, if this isn't getting us closer to George Orwell's big brother, I don't know what is. How insane is this? They're deleting negative reviews. Let's make it even worse. Facebook takes down trading group with 157,000 members amid GameStop frenzy. Facebook can cite any reason. If someone said the F word, someone said a bad word, someone was offensive, they could take you down for any reason. Why are they taking these people down now? Isn't it convenient? They, they said, oh, we found something wrong. You said something offensive. We're taking you down. Let's make it even worse. Discord took down the Wall Street Bets channel, citing offensive language. It's been around for months. Let's say it's been around for years. I'm on other Discord servers with language extremely offensive, and it conveniently got shut down when people weren't allowed to trade. I'm telling you, the poor must stay poor. And it's never been more evident than it is right now. It is kind of frustrating. A lot of people, I, I see a lot of uh, hedge fund, or let's say really good managers, brokers, hedge fund managers saying, it's not a good investment. GameStop shouldn't be worth this much. It doesn't matter at this point anymore. It doesn't matter what GameStop is worth. Let me lose my money if I want to. The only reason they're halting trading and saying it's not worth as much is because the hedge fund managers, the hedge funds, make money when it goes down. So obviously they want it to go down. It's At this point, I do own shares, but it's not about the money. I don't mind losing 100% of what I own in GME, in GameStop. It's about sending a message. And it's very frustrating. I think there was a saying. I'm stealing the saying from someone. Sorry, I wrote it down. Those who do not move don't notice their chains. And now people are moving and we notice how held down we are. It's not really a free market. The rich, the elite must stay elite. I hate saying that. I, I, I was never this big into conspiracy theories. And till now, it's not really conspiracy theory. It's real. It's real life. It's extremely frustrating. Let me show you why the rich will stay rich. The poor must stay poor. Remember when senators got coronavirus briefings before the public and sold off millions of dollars in stocks before the crash last year and faced no consequences and no regulation? Then Reddit made one stock into a meme and they're talking about restructuring the whole market. How insane is this? If you forgot, let's take a look here. Two senators under scrutiny over selling stock for the coronavirus market crash. But do insider trading laws apply? They knew what they were saying in that press briefing, in that news release was gonna tank the market. They knew, so they sold. I believe reportedly sold 500,000 and 1.5 million. Luffler bought between 100,000 and 250,000 in shares. She ended up getting caught, Senator Kelly ended up getting caught lying. She sold more than $18 million of shares. Nothing happened, nothing went wrong. Let me show you another example of why the retail traders will get punished. The billionaires, the ones who are making all the money, don't get punished. Take a look. Kodak Insider Trading actually just coincidental interest in film photography. Can you believe this? Kodak, a film company, got su suddenly turned into a pharmaceutical company. They got a new project, an $800 million project from the government into coronavirus vaccines. And conveniently, this guy says, look, he knows how bad this looks. He purchased $20 million in shares just prior to the government's announcement. I can't believe this. There's, this is insider trading. If you told me you were going to buy Kodak, I would actually stop talking to you. One of the, I think Kodak is a worse, it's a worse investment than AMC, a theater that's not allowed to have any shows right now. A failing company. 
this guy just conveniently, where is it? Just struck him this morning, right before, he invested 20 million, right before it went up 300%. Take a look at this guy. This guy's 95 years old and still does insider trading, decided to make money. This guy's 150 years old and still needs to make, he's 650 years old and still, still decides to invest and wants to make money. He's one foot in the grave and thinks taking another $80 million will make him this money. Will, will make him happier. I don't know. It's insane. I can't believe it. And then, okay, here, make it worse. July 28th, th that happened. This is update September 16th. Kodak stock soars after review finds no insider trading. The CEO conveniently purchased the Friday before the news came out. Isn't that insider trading? This 950 year old guy bought $20 million worth of shares in a failing company. Just cause what, what did he say? Just struck him early this morning. The most convenient thing in the world. No penalties, nothing, no jail time. If I did that straight to jail, let me give you another, I think I stole this saying from someone, shout out to whoever said it. If the penalty for breaking a law is a fine, then that law exists only for the lower class. How, how perfect that is. If the penalty for breaking law is a fine, the rich, they don't mind paying a fine. If uh, there was another analogy, I think Lewis Rossman said it best. If I park my car to buy a ticket is $20, but to not buy a ticket and get fined by the cops is $5. Why not just pay the fine? Some of these people are making millions. Let's say a hedge fund makes billions and they get fined 10, 20 million. You're getting paid to break the law. My favorite snippet. Where is it? This guy. Speaking of 950 years old, one foot in the grave, I love this guy. This fair share is a BS concept. It's a way of attacking wealthy people. Put yourself in his Gucci loafers in his yacht. Imagine yourself 650 years old. I, I can't imagine, he's so unhappy that he's losing money. It's an attack on wealthy people. What about all the people that lost their money, their houses, their lives in the financial crisis? Or what about just 10 months ago? I bet he profited off of it. Isn't it convenient? Four years ago, he was fined $5 million for insider trading, but he made billions off of it. He's worth over $2 billion, I believe. He got a $5 million fine. That does nothing. I have proof of it right here. Leon Cooperman paying nearly $5 million. That's, at, that's nothing. For a billionaire, that's absolutely nothing. It's never been more clear and evident. I'm extremely frustrated. I don't know what to do. I've never felt more helpless. I, I do own shares of GameStop. I'm holding. It's not about the money. It's about sending a message. I've never, again, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of speechless. I'm trying to think of what else to say. What can help you guys? I've never felt more helpless. It's so blatant. We knew the system was rigged. Everyone knew that at least billionaires stay Rich, I get it. Billionaires make more money in recessions than they do during normal times. That's fine. I get it. But like to actually try to hold us down, all we're trying to do is just buy shares and we're not allowed to buy shares. They're purposely tanking the stock price so that they can cover themselves. Eventually they'll be right. The company can't keep going up forever. I get it. But until that point, if you continue losing money in your hedge fund, that's your fault. You got caught with your pants down. Don't put two hands in the cookie jar. In the cookie jar. You got caught. Just take your loss and go. I can't do that. Imagine I go up to a bank. If I don't pay, if I miss a mortgage once, they come knocking. They want the house back. If I miss a car payment. These people, it's not like they're going to go bankrupt. If they do, completely their fault. You have to take your loss. It's not about, let's say, oh, some people's pensions will be lost. It's not my issue. I can't say, hey guys, I'm losing money. Can you pause? It's my pension. Let me get it back. It doesn't work. I'm extremely frustrated. I don't know what else to say. I'm trying not to curse because my dad watches this. Hi dad. But it's not about the money anymore. It's about sending a message. So I have GameStop shares. If you have $300, buy one. And hopefully I'll see you guys on the moon. Thank you.